Well, that was uh, Bob Cooper reporting. And we're joined now by Connor O'Shea, the Policy and Public Affairs Manager at Generation Rent. Thank you for joining us this morning. Morning. Um, you saw that particular example there with the chalets. It's quite a specific example, isn't it? And sympathy uh, with those owners. But this is a problem, a much wider problem. You're absolutely right. Um, we do have sympathy with the owners of this because they've been caught up in something that's probably not entirely intended to discuss the sort of chalet situation that they have. Um, it's not something that could be a permanent or sole residence of anybody. So it's not really the intended target of the, these legislations and these restrictions. But the fact that they're coming in in Cumberland is really instructive of the situation that's happening across the country relating to holiday lets and short-term lets, Airbnbs, that are taking houses out of the long-term supply. So essentially meaning that people who want to rent a home for the long term to put down roots in their communities are finding it increasingly difficult to do so and that those homes are being transferred across to short-term Airbnb holiday lets. And what is the impact of that on local people's lives? Well, it's, it's so difficult for renters across the board at the moment. Sort of private tenants are at the sharp end of the housing crisis that we've spoken about so much. But in truth, it's very difficult for people who are in these areas where the homes are being hemorrhaged out into Airbnb in a different way because there's just such a critical undersupply of homes in these areas. And it's, it's impossible for essentially not only the renters to find somewhere to live at an affordable rate, but also if we're speaking about tourist areas, it's very difficult for the businesses that operate in tourist areas to hire staff who are able to rent a property and can live there for a long period of time. And you were talking about tourist areas. So, you know, in, in your mind's eye, you're thinking about places that go, people go on holiday and that's mm. where the second homes might be. Um, but is it as true in other areas? Because obviously you can rent air mm. Airbnbs in cities and places that maybe aren't typical tourist destinations. Absolutely right. And um, I think people do often conceptualise this problem to be a one of tourists, coastal towns. But it's across the board, as you said, in cities, Airbnbs and short term lets are through the roof. Um, Generation Rent actually did some research recently and we found that 29 homes a day are being lost from the, short, from the private rented sector into short term lets, which means 29 homes a day across the country, across all sorts of different types of um, living situations are being lost. And the losers to that really are the tenants, the people who are looking to find new homes or the people who are finding that their rent is being driven up by the just fundamental lack of supply in the private rented sector. And as we know, tenants have it so difficult at the moment. They are at the sharp end of this housing crisis and this problem is only making it worse. I wonder how many properties, though, it would actually free up if, if a second home owner has to pay double the council tax, because I suppose mm. a lot of them will be quite wealthy people anyway. They might not like it, but they can probably afford it in most cases. They're not necessarily going to free up and give that house or sell that house to a local person, are they? Uh, well, that, that totally depends. I think the situation that we have here is that it's really preferential at the moment to run a short-term let. So essentially, for, for lots and lots of tax reasons, it's really a much cheaper operation to run an Airbnb or a short-term let than it is to run a long-term property in the private rented sector. So a lot of these measures are really just sort of rebalancing that and making it a fair playing field for, for tenants who want to live somewhere long-term versus those who want to come in in the short-term. And once we see that happening, we might see a much better um, balance and a much better situation for, the, for these tenants with, when they're in competition with short-term holiday, holiday makers. Right. And I mean, the, the situation for renters at the moment, I mean, it, it, this is just one aspect, uh, isn't it, that's making life incredibly difficult for people who have to rent? Absolutely. As I said, uh, private tenants are at the real sharp end of this housing crisis. Rents are going through the roof. Um, basically, it's, it's completely unaffordable for tenants who are looking to find a new home and increasingly, for those who want to stay in their own home, the rent increases are being so high. Uh, that's underpinned by a fundamental lack of supply across the board, across all houses. But the, the short-term lets here are exacerbating that. And that's why we're seeing councils stepping in and making sure that they know that there's enough homes in their local areas for the local community. We would like to see them do more. We would like to see a situation where local authorities can have that agency to say, no, you can't have a short-term let running there because we know that there are families in this community who need that for the long term. And that's the long term aim. The government are looking at it, but we think they need to do more. Conor O'Shea from Generation Rent, thank you very much indeed. Thanks thank for coming you. in.